Hi, this is JP Morgan. Happy Halloween from the Slanted Lands. Tonight we're out here in the middle of the woods with a couple of very scary characters doing a little B-grade horror movie. We're going to show you how to use underlight and just some interesting things for Halloween. So we're going to show you makeup and some things come together to create our characters. So let's get started and see what we can do. <laughs> This was a difficult shoot for many reasons. We were off in the woods away from the road and had to carry all the equipment and generators to the location. There was poison oak all over the location so we had to be careful of that and then of course there was a ton of makeup that had to be done. Terry with Makeup Magic started the makeup just after lunch. Her goal was to be on set by 7 p.m. Things went a little long for her, took her a little longer than we expected, but when she finally got there, we weren't ready for her either. Terry did a fabulous job on the makeup. A single makeup artist with three characters like this is just epic. She did a great job. When you take three characters like this into the woods, this image feels like a vintage horror film. So let's break down the shot and see what we've got. I went up into a ravine next to my house that our neighbors own, got permission to shoot there. Then I picked the best location for the look of the shot, but not necessarily the best location for smoke. Okay, kill the smoke, you guys. You know, we're up at the head of the ravine, the air is going to flow down the ravine. If I would have been at the bottom of the ravine, the smoke would have dissipated and flown right into me. It would have been perfect. As it was, we were at the top of the ravine and the smoke was very thick where we were at. It became very difficult for us to get the shot we wanted because the smoke was too thick. You really want thick smoke in the background and lighter as it comes towards you. What I really wanted was just this nice, even haze throughout the entire area. It was a large area that was a difficult assignment, especially with the ravine where the air was flowing down. That being said, that is why the creative process is such a challenge. It's not always perfect. We struggled with the smoke from the outset, but it was not near as dispersed as I wanted. To solve this, we took it up to the top of the ravine and allowed it to flow down in towards us. I didn't realize that we could have taken it even further up the ravine and maybe that would have solved the problem. But as it was, the smoke was very thick as it hit our scene. We had to fan it to try to thin it out. Really, the secret from the outside is to allow the smoke to flow into the shot from as far away as possible and just cover the area. Things just seem to get tougher and tougher. We're still struggling with the smoke when the talent all arrived. So the talent was a little late already and I'm not ready, so we're really behind. And to complicate matters, the smoke is flowing right down this ravine right into the yard of a neighbor. We decided to switch to the stage and studio smoke. It dissipates a lot quicker. This at least solved that problem so the smoke wasn't flowing into his yard. We finally got the smoke to cooperate and everything else was moving along and then the wind shifted. You know, we started moving all the smoke around, tried to change the direction of the smoke, and then the wind stopped. We had just calm. That was nice for a few minutes. We got the smoke up, we fanned it around, gave us a nice look, but then of course the wind reversed itself once again. Working outside with smoke is a pain in the butt. But finally we got things moving together, but unfortunately that wasn't the end of the story. Let's take a break and look at how we lit this shot. The first light we set up is our main light. In this situation, it's a backlight. It's gonna be a backlight for the smoke. This lights the whole scene and gives you a canvas to work with. We placed a Dynalite 1600 watt pack in the background with a single head. It's a travel head and doesn't need a reflector. We aim this at the scene. It's a long way back there, but it will light the smoke and give us a nice look from behind. We then added a light inside the cauldron. Now this is a new light we're working with today that we've never worked with before. It's called a Flex Flash by Photoflex. It's a 400 watt second mono block. These are really reasonably priced and a great strobe unit. We worked this thing hard all night, gave us great consistent light, really turned out to be a great light. We use this in the cauldron, like I say, pointing up at the face of our talent. We put two layers of 3027 tough white diffusion on it to soften it out, kind of glow up on the faces of our talent. We then added a second flex flash from camera left to light the smoke and give some light on the talent. In that same step, we added another Dynalite head from behind, camera left, in order to give us some light on the smoke in that area as well. We were working so fast and things were happening so quick that I didn't really get the lighting breakdown that I wanted, so those two are in the same shot. Our last light was a Triton behind the camera with a softbox. This is a fill light just to give us a little bit of fill and open the scene up a bit. You know, we're working with a horror scene, so an underlight or horror light seemed like the appropriate choice. The coloring gave us the perfect excuse and motivation for that light. You know, as we got into the swing of things, I'm just now starting to shoot. Things are looking good. I'm feeling like I've got some images happening. I'm really starting to get it to where I'm thinking where it's time for us to break in and try to break things up and make it happen. And then I get a call from out on the road 
And it's Jillian saying, the neighbors just came over and they said, if we don't stop right now, flashing the flashes, they're gonna call the cops. At that point, I'm going, oh, I'm just getting going here. So I quickly shot a few more, and then Jillian called again and said, he's gonna call the cops. So I finally shut it down, and that truly did end our story that night. Uh, we had permission to be there. We had permission to be there till midnight. But at 10 o'clock, the neighbors freaked out on us, and we had to shut it down. So I didn't get all the images I wanted, but here are some of the final images. You know, I really do love shooting this type of fantasy imagery. I wish I would have had more time to explore some other scenes, some other options, but we got some great shots nonetheless. Taking the images the next day into Photoshop, I really wanted to give them a little better look, just play with them a little bit and see what we could do. I pushed the exposure up just a little bit, I opened up the shadows, then I moved the color balance to about 4150, which means I cooled it off just a little bit. Then I pushed the clarity just a little bit, about nine points to sharpen up the smoke and make it look more interesting. Last of all, when the images are processed, I added a gradient map where you can play with how much color. You can bleach it to almost black and white or add a little bit of color. And I played with that until where it felt a little bleached out and gave us our final image. This was a crazy shoot. You know, I guess it's appropriate for Halloween. Have a happy and safe Halloween and keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking.